Now, when we round this corner behind me, we're gonna finally be at Falkenstein Castle. I almost said Frankenstein Castle. <laughs> it's not Frankenstein's castle, it's Frankenstein's monster's castle. Down amongst the Bavarian Alps sits perhaps the world's most famous castle, Neuschwanstein. And though it's definitely not my favorite, I bet you these seven million annual tourists would heartedly disagree. I mean, they'd be wrong, but they'd disagree as they flock their way to Ludwig's crowning achievement. However, despite the castle and Ludwig's fame, very few people seem to know that Neuschwanstein might have merely been a prototype, a warm-up act to an even grander and more opulent endeavor, that of Falkenstein, a castle that never came to be, instead leaving a lofty ruin, Germany's highest in fact, that was never made whole, and very few outside of Bavaria seem to know anything about it. So it's about time we discover these ruins for ourselves. Go on a good hike, maybe? Picnic amongst these storied ruins? But most importantly, let's judge the crap out of it and answer the question, is it any good? Is it worth going to? All right, so first up, how are we gonna to get to Falkenstein? Well, our hike begins from the closest town of Fronten, so the question is, how do we get there? And that shouldn't be too hard because we can actually just take the train, it's got a big train station. But considering the social distancing rules and the fact that it takes two and a half hours by train compared to the one and a half hours by car, I think the choice is pretty obvious. I'm gonna go hunt for a share now. So now we just got out of the car and onto the trail here in Fronten. It only took about an hour and a half to get here as expected, no traffic, love that. And quite frankly, it does make me feel really good that I took the car and didn't take the train. As if we'd done that, we'd only be halfway here. And what a shame, I'd much rather be outside, you know what I mean? Ooh, bicycles. Ah, yeah, bitte schön. Aww. Now about the trail itself, originally I was just gonna use Google Maps, right? Cause I mean, it seemed to know exactly where to go and the trails were marked, but it was recommending a four kilometer trail, 400 meters of elevation though. So I feel like that would just be a bit steep and I don't know, it was a there and back. I just didn't think it sounded that interesting. So then I had the smart idea of going to the Front and Tourism website. Usually those tourism websites are pretty bad, but this one was brilliant. Right there on the homepage, it pretty much had a perfect trail for today. Seven kilometers, so definitely a bit longer, but still 400 meters of elevation. So that means it's gonna be just a little bit more gradual. And instead of being a there and back again, it's gonna be a proper circuit tour. Oh, and I love those. I love going on loops, you know, there and back, it can feel a bit boring. Anyway, so I'm super thrilled to have found that. You should definitely check it out, link in the description. But for now, let's enjoy that spring sun and the leftover winter snow. Now, I don't know if this is gonna come up on camera. I really hope it does though. But over my right shoulder are the castle ruins of Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg, which I'm particularly excited about because that was one of my favorite videos last summer and possibly some of my favorite castle ruins in all of Germany. Let's hope Falkenstein lives up to it. Now, one of the things I will say right off the bat about this hike, but also Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg, is it's really cool that you can see the castles right from the get-go. So there's Falkenstein right there. You don't have to hike all the way through the woods and the forest and then eventually pop out at a castle. You can see them. And I mean, maybe that's a little bit daunting because you know how much you have to do. But it's also just really cool to see them like while you're walking around. I love it. Man, are you seeing that? That is a beautiful view of the mountains. I just love that you can see kind of the villages nestled in the valley. We'll put up something other than my face right now. Oh my Lord. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful, right? I mean, can't get enough of that stuff. That was my favorite thing in Eisenberg, actually. It wasn't even the castle ruins. It was that as you looked out over the pastures, you could just see all the farms and the villages. So cool.
So remember when I talked about how awesome that map was earlier? Camille's not happy, but maybe I should have paid more attention to it, as instead of walking up this road behind me, I uh, had to take the hard way. In summer, I'd probably highly recommend it. In a snowy spring though, I'd maybe skip it. <laughs> So now that we're on easier terrain and we're getting very close to lunch, I want to talk to you about my backpack. Because it's not any old backpack like Camille's lame hiking backpack. This thing is a specialized picnic basket backpack. It's awesome. I got it as a wedding present from my dad and though I like to be kind of minimalist with my possessions, this one sparks joy. <laughs> Alright, so as we round this beautiful little cobblestone walkway behind me, we're going to be at Falkenstein Castle. And before we get there, I just got to share some of the stuff I learned about this castle with you. It's nuts! So the famous Ludwig II, the Mad King of Bavaria, the one who built Neuschwanstein, the most famous castle in Germany, well, he viewed it as more of a prototype, at least from what I can tell. And the reason I say that is because Falkenstein was supposed to be Neuschwanstein 2.0. Bigger, better, stronger, more opulent, I guess. So he hired the same architect as Neuschwanstein, and this guy just couldn't deliver the opulence. So we fired him, got in a new guy. This new guy realized that Ludwig had no idea what he was talking about, and a castle of greater opulence than Neuschwanstein could never be built up here. So he quit, just didn't want to be part of that sinking ship. And so they brought in a third architect, and this guy realizing what everyone else did, that this was never going to happen, mate. it's just a complete fool's errand, he decided to make the king happy, and drew up the most insane plans he could think of. I mean, we're talking 14 year old in Minecraft crazy, giant stained glass panels, mosaic domes, the lot, which of course I'm sure you're catching on to is not the ruin that we're going to be seeing today. None of that stuff exists. Otherwise they'd have preserved it better and it would be a big tourist attraction. So what are we going to be looking at today? Well, the castle that Ludwig envisioned was never built. Instead, the ruins we're going today are of Castle Fronten, a Tyrolean castle far more related to Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg, my favorite Bavarian castles, than it is related to Neuschwanstein. So I've got high hopes for this, because again, those are my favorites. Let's go check them out. Okay, so we turned the corner and we finally arrived at Castle Falkenstein. And I tell you what, the previous version of me did not know that the last little bit of that hike was going to turn into such an icy nightmare. It really got my spirits down. But don't worry, as we turn this side of the castle, the view gets perfect. Now that looks like a good spot for a picnic. But now it's finally time to explore it. And though sadly it's not quite as impressive as Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg, it still looks pretty cool. The major drawback is it seems currently to be locked, so we can't go inside it or see any of the rampart views, which feels like we're having a lot of bad luck with that lately. Same thing happened in Pazau, all those castles were locked. <sighs> Never mind. Instead, we'll just go and enjoy the perimeter and then begin our descent back down the mountain. Thank you. 
All right, so we finish up the castle. I think we're gonna head back down the mountain now because the light's beginning to fade. I don't really wanna walk in the dark. So unless we see something really, really cool, we'll just see you back at the car. Bye. All right, everybody, so here we are. It only took about an hour and a half to get back to this sign and back to the parking lot. Sorry for not really picking up the camera and chatting to you, but honestly, it was largely uneventful. Just a stroll down in the woods. Pretty easy. Now, what can I say that the day is done? Is it my favorite castle? Nah, Eisenberg still has the crown. However, I had a ton of great fun getting up there and there were some really awesome views and hey, never hurts to have a good old picnic. And so I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, don't forget, like and subscribe. And if you want my full thoughts and context, meet me back at home in Munich for the conclusion. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Munich. They're obviously not my apartment. I was actually moving right now, and so it's a, just a big mess. So we thought we'd take a break, go out into the park and review Falkenstein. <laughs> I think the best way to do that is probably just to split it into a clean, positive and negative list. And since I'd rather end on a positive, let's start with the negative. For that, I'll hand it over to you. So there weren't too many negatives that I could think of, but one would be the hike up to the castle ruins. As you could see from the video, you know, the hike is actually sort of a paved road intended for vehicles. And it's not too steep, um, it's not too flat, it's sort of a gentle incline for about 30 or 40 minutes. And as you can imagine, that's just not very interesting, especially when you have so many other really, really cool hikes in Bavaria with mm -hmm. excellent views. Um, and the second negative that I can think of is also kind of disappointing like the height. It's actually the, uh, the castle ruins themselves. It's really just three very tall walls blocked off by a locked gate so that you can't even go stand inside right. the castle. So I found myself being a little bit disappointed, but I really did enjoy this trip. Mm -hmm. um, so Ben's gonna tell you all about the positives. I mean, that paints a pretty bleak picture off the bat, right? The hike's not good, the castle's <laughs> not good. Why on earth would you even go to Falkenstein then? And well, to me, the obvious answer is the view. I mean, it is Germany's highest castle, perhaps Germany's most disappointing, but also the highest. And that's pretty cool, right? I mean, you're sitting on this peak right next to the beginnings of the Alps, looking out into Austria. But also, if you turn around, you're going to get to see the rolling kind of meadows of Bavaria. So it's two really, really good views in a way that, well, usually I think you'd have to pay for. So the fact that they're free, easy to get to, that's pretty nice. And then another way to view them, of course, there was the picnic that we did. I loved that. That was a ton of fun. But also there's kind of that restaurant that had a patio built out overlooking the valley. Man, that looked like a lot of fun. I bet you it is incredibly overpriced, but... I mean, come on, I'd buy a beer there, easy. And then one of the things that you mentioned as a negative, and though I definitely agree, can also be seen as a positive, and that's the paved road. I mean, it is gentle and gradual, but also therefore very accessible. And that's something that's pretty rare in a lot of the trips that we go on. I mean, think of the Verdenfels Castle. I know you guys watched that video, or the Schlierzee one, Eisenberg, Home Freiburg. So many of the ones we go to, I mean, you, the hikes can be pretty tough and not accessible at all. And there's kind of a difficulty for people who are differently abled, where they end up usually just having to go to Schwanstein, because it's the only one that can really look after them and make sure that they have the support that they need. And I've got to say, the fact that this little castle ruin with this view has an easy road, it's also got a shuttle service up to that restaurant, though I bet you have to buy a beer if you use it. I mean, that's really cool. It's great to see. And I think it adds just kind of another paradigm that would allow different groups and groups of people to go. So that's pretty cool. Um, so with that being said, please like, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, follow us on Instagram. It really, really helps. But most importantly, if you haven't seen the Neuschwanstein video, that's an old one, so it's kind of crap. The Eisenberg and Hohenfreiberg video is pretty cool, and it's still one of my favorite places in Bavaria. Have you seen those videos? Are you going to watch them? Because if you like this one, you're going to like them. Have you been to these places? All of those things. Hit me up in the comments. I want to hear your opinions. How would you rank them? And for that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I like pick it up. Hey, so you we. Should... Okay, I was kidding. I was doing the face thing. What I was face? like, oh. <laughs> <laughs>